Okay, today we're going to be talking about um, brushes in Photoshop. So um, I'm going to ask you to create a new document. So instead of opening a document, we're actually going to create new. And you're just going to choose art and illustration. Um, and then you're just going to choose poster size and make it landscape. Um, this gives us a big area to work with when we're working with the brushes. And we're just going to hit create. We're also going to create a second document. So we're going to go to File, New, again, not open. Um, and this time, we're going to create just an 8 inches by 8 inches document. And this is where we're going to, um, oh, no, actually, I lie. We're going to create a pixel-based document. So you're going to choose pixels. And you're going to make it 2,500 by uh, 2,500. And we're going to be creating our own brushes in here. Okay, so you guys have all done the watercolor tutorial where you actually downloaded brushes and installed them into Photoshop. Now we're going to be creating our own brushes. And we're going to be saving them in Photoshop. So you're going to hit create. And you're going to end up with this um, kind of square format. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually create our brushes first. So what I'd like everybody to do is download an image. Um, I'm just going to quickly go to um, Canvas and I'm going to show you these uh, directions that I have. So I took notes here to set up a separate file to create your brush. Um, you're going to file place embedded, make sure the image is and the texture is black and white. Um, everything that is white will be transparent with your brush. And then you're going to flatten your layers and select all and go to define brush, edit define brush. So um, these are basically the step by step on how to create your brush and that's under brushes, which is a page in Canvas. So if we go to our modules and then we are on week nine, you can go to where it says brushes right at the top there. And um, that will take you to this area with all of these kind of resources and the notes for this. OK, um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to choose an image. So I'm actually going to just type in gem. So I want all of you guys to try uh, using some sort of like gem or crystal. And. Uh, of course, my Internet is taking forever. Surprise, surprise. Okay, so you would go to images. Um, ideally, if your image is larger, it's going to be better. Um, and we don't want something to be pixelated, but so in order to choose a larger brush, you can go to where, I mean, larger image, you can go to where it says tools, go to where it says size and choose large. And then you can choose one of these. You can also choose a crystal or something like that. I'm just going to use this image. Um, there's a bunch of different ones here, but I can cut it down and um, just be able to do part of this image. So I'm going to say save. Um, and then I'm going to place into my 2500 by 2500 um, pixel document i'm going to place that image in so i'm going to place embedded because remember the embedded means that it becomes part of that file and we want that to happen so um, i'm going to go to recents and of course it didn't download it did here it is on my desktop okay 
Um, so there's that image. And I'm actually going to place that image, definitely double clicking, and that gets rid of the X. Um, you can also, when you have that X, you can click on this little uh, checkbox, and that will also um, make sure that the image is um, s s uh, there. So what I'm going to do is, because I have all these extra gems, uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase them with a mask. So um, I'm just going to put a mask on there and I'm going to choose a regular brush. And in order to get rid of them, I'm going to paint with black. So I'm just going to basically paint out all the ones that I don't want. And then um, I'm going to make this one larger. So you probably, if you, if you just have one image, you're not going to have to um, do all this work in order to um, get it the way that you want. Um, but I do because I have extra in the image. So if you do have extra in the image, then this is the way that you would want to get rid of that. So I've made it the size that I want. Actually, I could probably make it a little bit larger than that as well. I could have it basically fill up um, that entire square because the bigger it is, um, the bigger your brush can be without kind of losing um, its integrity. Okay, so I have that filling up the whole space. My background is white. The next thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to turn it black and white. So there's a couple different ways that we can do that. If we were going to do it non-destructively, which is good practice, we can go down to our little black and white circle down here at the bottom, and you can go to where it says black and white. And you want to kind of have a little bit of variation in this. So there's a lot of purples kind of in here. I'm going to make those a little bit darker. And then my reds, I'm going to kind of lighten up a bit. So this gives me like a little bit more variation. Um, now, anything that is white in this image is going to show up as um, transparent in your brush. And anything that is black is going to be opaque. So anything that's gray is going to be slightly transparent. So if you remember with those watercolor brushes, um, they weren't 100% um, opaque. They were had a lot of transparency to them. And that was because when they those brushes were made, they were made in kind of a range of grays. So once you're kind of happy with the way that looks, um, then we want to merge all these layers together. Now we haven't done this. Mostly we've been working non destructively and wanting to make sure that we um, keep those layers so that we can edit it further. But in this situation, we're actually going to merge the layers. So the way that we do that is we go up to the fly down and then you can go to where it says merge visible. The other option is that you can um, select all of these and right click and go to where it says merge visible. And either way, you're going to end up with one layer. OK, then you hit command A, which makes the selection around everything. So the other way to do that is select all. And then you go to where it says edit and define brush preset. And so what happens then is you're going to see a little image of your brush. And it's going to say sampled brush 90, 972. But I'm going to actually call this um, crystal. And then I'm going to hit OK. Now you can see that here's your brush. So if we go back to the other document that we created, um, depending on what color we have in our foreground, which can be any color that we want, um, we can paint with that brush. And if you kind of do all sorts of things, and if you just click one time, it will come out like a stamp on that. Um, okay, and we can change the size of it by hitting the brackets so you can make it smaller. Um, and any of those other settings that you might want, you could rotate it so that it's sideways. OK. Now, this bigger document that I created, we're going to do something called a uh, brush. Um, oh, what did I call it? Hold on a second. Um, I opened that document so that we could uh, 
test drive is what I called it, a brush test drive, which means we're just gonna kind of feel out these brushes and see how they work. So that you guys can see all the different settings that are available to you. Um, so what we've got here is if you open the brushes panel, if you go to window and then brushes, um, the brushes panel is where all of your brushes exist. So here's my crystal brush that I just created. And then here are all these other brushes that are included in Photoshop, okay? Um, so you've got your general brushes, dry media, wet media, legacy, special effects, copier, mega pack. Um, there's all sorts of other brushes. You can go to where it says get more brushes. It's gonna take you to a website with Adobe that you can kind of download. This guy Kyle has created all these um, extraordinary brushes and we just sign into your temple account and you can download those brushes. You can also go to a website called Brush Easy, which allows you to download free brushes that other people have made. And if you want to export your own brush, like let's say you do a bunch of these crystal brushes and you decide you want to sell them, um, you can actually say export selected brushes. And what it does is it's going to save your file as uh, un well, right now we can call this crystals, but we only have one in there, and dot .abr. And that dot .abr is a Photoshop brush file, so it can only be opened there. Um, we can save it on the desktop. And then when you go to open that, you just double click on it and it will open up in Photoshop. Um, but that means you can send it, share it to, with people, do whatever you want with it. Um, and that's how you would export those brushes that you create. So um, now if we go to the brush settings, um, I still have my crystal brush selected. And there's all these settings on the left-hand side that allow us to adjust our actual brushes. So things like our shape dynamics, um, there are these things called jitters, which basically randomize um, the shape. So if I increase the jitter, um, you can see that um, down here, there's an example. And actually, if we go to just the regular brush tip, I can space these out a little bit so you can see the variation in the size. Um, and so these shape dynamics, I can, the more I have, the higher the jitter, the more randomized um, those shapes are. So you can see as I kind of paint, it will start to change um, size for me here. Then you also have um, angle jitter, which allows us to change the angle of our, um, of our brush as well. Um, and you also have roundness, which the roundness changes the angle of the the brush within a 360 degree kind of space. So it makes it look like it's rotating a little bit, um, which doesn't really make sense when you say roundness, but um, that's what it's doing. You can also flip it either horizontally or vertically is another jitter, okay? And so you have, you'll notice that there are these controls. So those of you that have any sort of Wacom tablet, um, you can change it so that uh, it's based on pen pressure. But if you're just using the mouse, then that's not going to work for you. You just need to have that control off. All right. So we can turn that off and we can go to scattering, which is the next one. Um, this allows you to kind of move your brush away from um, how I'm just going to create a new layer here and fill it so that I can show you. Um, so basically this one allows you that as if I draw a straight line from here to here, you can see that my um, shape is above and below um, that brush. So if you kind of have like a circle and you want the circle to kind of be all over the place, um, this allows you to do that, this scatter jitter. And then you also have this count jitter, which means that there'll be more in some places and fewer in other places. Um, and so here you can see that some of these can be a lot, and some of them can be a little. So this this kind of thing allows you to kind of cover a large space um, quickly. All right, so you can see how that works. All right, so that's scattering. Then you have texture, which means that you're actually adding a texture, an additional texture to um, your brush. Now this doesn't show with all of the brushes, so you can actually see that um, what it's doing here is it's causing my brush to be um, just darker, 
so if I were to choose, like, let's say I choose this one, um, I can't really see it. Let's see, scale. Some of them you can see and some of them you can't. Contrast. Mode, height, depth. Um, I don't think that this one you can see very well. Uh, let's see, invert. Yeah, no. Uh, no. So this this actually works a lot better with some rather than others. You can load certain um, textures in. So like, let's say I say, uh, I think there's patterns. Let's say I add that. Append means that we're just adding it in. Um, let's see if this weirdness shows up. No. Um, so it's only going to work with some of your brushes. So if I choose a different brush and then choose the texture, um, it might show up. Nope. Um, special effects. So, so the texture doesn't always work. Um, dual brush. This is kind of cool because if I could uh, add this one and that one, and what it does is it combines the two of them. Um. So over here, so it's combining my uh, brush with this square brush. What's cool is like if I have that one, that the half tone one that I just had selected. Uh, where is it? Got lots of texture ones here. This might be partially it. No. Um, but you come up with like a lot of cool things. Um, when you combine these brushes, I don't see that half tone brush. Um, but basically, it contrasts like the two brushes so that you can get some pretty cool effects. Um, so that's the dual brush, and then you've got color dynamics and this is this is where things can get kind of fun I'm gonna create a new layer here um, and so your color dynamics allow you to adjust things like the hue saturation brightness and purity of your color so right now I have this purple chose uh, I've chosen this purple and if I do a hue jitter what's gonna happen is like a bunch of different hues um, are going to filter in with that purple. Um, if I put the huge editor down and I just do saturation, then it's going to be different saturations of that purple. Actually, it combines the the per, the foreground and the background. So if I had purple in the front and I had red in the back, um, it would give me a different experience because it would it would combine the purple and the red together to give me different saturations. Um, and then brightness is just going to be whether it's uh, bright or uh, um, maybe it also could be in the gray sector. So those are brighter. Um, if I make it all the way to the right, it's going to have less brightness to it. And then purity is like if you add to the right, it's going to be more pure in the hue. And if you bring it to the left, it's going to be less pure, which means it's going to be 